laughing. <laughs> Good evening, boys and girls. Happy Thursday. Welcome to another live edition of Highbury Squad. It's one of your favorite shows. That's right. Josh is back with a little bit of tactical prowess as we head towards Leeds. And he's going to also let us know how and why he thinks we were so dominant over West Ham. Here we go. <laughs> Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad. <laughs> Good evening, boys and girls. Well, sorry. <laughs> I, I let them in on a little bit of it. Kev Kev was at the uh, the game last night and he interviewed Jacka. <laughs> I was just wondering what he really wanted to say to him and Josh made me laugh. So <laughs> welcome everyone to another live edition of the Highbury Squad. Josh, welcome back to the show, mate. How are you? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm very well, thank you. And yeah, I can only apologise to everybody who is listening to this that we have started <laughs> with a fit of the giggles, but it's purely <laughs> speculation on when Kev... At what point in this interview did he say to Granite Xhaka, I'd like you to leave the club? <laughs> You'll love this, I tell you. <laughs> Good evening, squaddies. I always lose my manners when Kev's not here. At ease, everyone. Thanks for joining us. And by the way, thanks to all 12,000 plus of you who tuned into the post-game show last night. We're so grateful for that. And to all of our new subscribers. If you haven't met Josh yet, you'll love him. And for the squaddies who are in chat, the usual suspects, welcome back as well. Right, Josh, let's get stuck into this right away, shall we? I am going yeah. to play you because I've been curious uh, what you think about what you thought about the game last night and why you um, and what your thoughts are on why we were so dominant over West Ham. Super Kev was covering the game. He was on the sidelines. He interviewed Jacka. He also spoke to Fabianski, um, which was a very honest discussion uh, about. I think we shot. I think we shook West Ham last night. So I'm going to play Kev's feedback for everyone. They've been dying to know what he thinks. It's about five or six minutes. Uh, listen to this, and then Josh will give us his thoughts as well. And then towards the end of the show, we're also going to play a clip from Kev asking you guys a very pertinent question. So here we go, squaddies. Let's roll. Squaddies, Sophie, at ease. Just want to have a recap. And um, I'll ask a couple of questions so you could put them in the show tomorrow. So this is still the night. It's early morning. And we've beaten West Ham 2-0. Um, very exciting game. Um, was excited to see how the team would react. Obviously, after the Aubameyang news, didn't think the preparation was right, particularly right. Manager and the players shouldn't be dealing with the ex-captain's um, misbehaviour. Um, shouldn't have to deal with that. But they had to. And well, did they respond? Against, we know this West Ham side is a good side. You know, we, we keep getting, it keeps getting chucked in our face. They've beaten Liverpool, they've beaten Man City, they've done this, they've done that, they've beaten Chelsea. Well, do you know what? We beat them today. And we, we, did we beat them? We beat them. Thoroughly convincing. And if we're honest, Tuna was pretty flattering. You know, Lacazette missed a penalty, but he played amazing. If it was 3 0, I think that would have been the fair the fair fair result today. They weren't really an attacking force. Our our back four, back five, whatever you want to call it, we dealt with them proper. <coughs> Propped them up. Michel Antonio ended up playing <laughs> wing back and then went back to centre forward in the end. But you know, we were we were good. We were good. I thought I've got to say, I thought our midfield too, Partey and and Granite Xhaka. I thought Declan Rice had a good game, but I thought R2 were better in the trenches than there, than, than, than Rice and Suchek. I thought that we bossed the game, we, we used it. Made a couple of mistakes, 
but that's going to happen. Got caught on it a couple of times, but as a feeders and as protection, we were better than them. We were bet better than West Ham. Saka, I think that was Saka's best game of the season. Masawaka just didn't, didn't know what to do. Saka was on it. He was on it today. Really on it. I thought Erdegaard was superb. Martinelli, wow. Has that boy taken his opportunity or what? You know, and that goal. I, I mentioned it as soon as I saw him go through and he put it in the bottom corner. You know, he's been obviously watching videos of Thierry, the main man, hasn't he? And um, he slotted it perfectly. That was clinical finishing. Real clinical. One chance, one goal. Um, that type of finish was, was the difference maker. Obviously, we got the penalty. Um, but it was all knitted together by Lacazette. I thought he was absolutely outstanding today. And, um, you know, what a game he had. Missed the penalty, I know, but, you know, when he's all-round play. He won us free kicks when he needed to. He held the ball at the top end of the pitch. Something that Mikel Antonio couldn't do. Uh, for West Ham to, to give them any momentum. Why couldn't Mikel Antonio do it? Because Ben White and Gabriel, Tommy Arsu and Kieran Tierney and Ramsdale, they were they were just better. They were too good. They were too good. Couldn't get away from it. And um, things were bouncing off in and then the midfielder midfielders were in the trenches getting the ball back and keeping us ticking over. Really good performance really good and then when we want somebody to come on and make an impact the Croyd and De Bruyne comes on ESR you know another we needed a little bit more legs I thought Odegaard had a good game uh, and was really efficient but we needed that killer instinct to ESR comes on and you know Saka feeds him and he goes on and, and puts us 2-0 up and it's game over absolutely game over so that was fantastic. So, here's a question. Leeds got beat 7-0. We beat West Ham 2-0. Do you think the weekend's going to be an easy game at Ellen Road? Do you think that? Number two, I will ask. What's your thoughts on Mikel Arteta? Obviously, the way he handled it. People are saying, you know, the dressing room. People have questioned whether he's lost the dressing room since he's um, made certain decisions. Players have seemed to have responded. So, what's your thoughts on Mikel Arteta? And last but not least... Has anybody heard whether Aubameyang is committed to Arsenal or not? Because if we haven't heard it by now, do you think we're going to hear it? So that's it. All done in under six minutes. Squaddies, at ease. Go on, here you go. Feedback. Me now. We yes. good? That's better. Okay, so two things that freaked everyone out. Number one, Kev whispering. <laughs> number two. <laughs> <laughs> and and it was from his premier location, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay, so here's the scoop why, okay. Um, he was he travelled from up north to down south for the game. He was working all day. He was on the sidelines. Did all the interviews after. Did the the game. Everything. He was. I got to tell you. Won't mind me telling you this. When he was leaving the Emirates, his cab couldn't find him at all. So I was on the phone with him trying to help him find the Starbucks, the Starbucks <laughs> outside the Emirates. I'm like, and people on the streets are like, Super Kev. And he's like, Where's the Starbucks? 
Starbucks. <laughs> so he was freezing cold. It's one o'clock in the morning. He's so over it. And then he gets to his hotel and he he's recording this. And I think usually he'd be like all in, but he didn't want to wake up anyone, you know, in the hotel because, you know, Kev's voice carries Josh. Mm. So he would have woken everybody up. Um, but yeah, he had it on. He certainly had it on whisper settings, Craig. There's no doubt about that. Um, Josh, first your initial response, your thoughts, and then we'll get to Kev's questions as well. Yeah, definitely. So I completely agree with Kev. I think if anybody is fortunate or unfortunate enough to follow me on Twitter, they'll see I mused exactly the point I'm going to come to. Now, if you'd said pre-game that the Xhaka and Partey midfield would have completely dominated uh, Suchek and Rice, I think we would have all told you, you're an idiot. Because just from what we've seen the rest of the season, they were just an outstanding midfield duo. And I think what we saw was Odegaard and Lacazette dropping in, giving those two even more to think about. It wasn't just Xhaka and Partey that won that midfield battle for us. It was the other two as well that were dropping in. And you could see Dawson didn't want to get pulled out from defence, tracking Lacazette, tracking Odegaard. Uh, we, West Ham didn't really know what to do with us to be honest. And I think that was the thing that saw us win the game was something that had changed and how Arteta has progressed and how he progressed his game from game. This isn't just like, you know, or, or is just like having a young player like Martinelli. Martinelli was anonymous, you'd say, against Everton, just didn't have the same impact that he had against Newcastle or the impact he had against... Um, against West Ham mm -hmm. he's going to have these peaks and troughs and I think Arteta is the same there was a lot of things that we saw in the Everton game that he's clearly seen how we got dominated in midfield how we didn't really have the players interchanging properly to give those central midfielders a problem completely seen the error of his ways and corrected it and I'm sure that will lead into one of Kev's questions on Mikel yeah. but um, Josh, yeah. to be honest with you, the night before, yeah. even though I predicted a 3-1 win for us, but mm. I was so nervous about Mikel Antonio and his strength and how he can bully people off the ball. Mm. And not that I felt like he could bully Gabriel, mm. but maybe if he was caught with Ben White one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. I was a little concerned about that. Tommy Yasu has proven that he can hold his own. And then the other thing I was saying on the show before the game was Declan Rice and how his tenacity and his overall mm. play and how he inserts himself into a game can, you know, makes it appear that he's he's kind of dictating what happens yeah. in a match and, and how the tempo of the game unfolds. And let's be honest, this West Ham team were lauded and they've been yeah. and they are in multiple competitions. They've done exceptionally well under David Moyes. You've got to give him credit for turning everything around after the sky was falling for them as a club on an ownership side and the management side, mm. right? But then to see us, I think that we absolutely took them by surprise last mm. night. Yeah, it is the... Yeah, I completely agree that this was a team, you know, David Moyes is... Uh, kind of that manager that you would say organized side very efficient in what they do and i agree with newman in terms of what he's saying about mickey antonio it's one goal in 12 but it's not just about his goals it's about right. what he brings it's that presence isn't it that you're talking about it's the strength holding people off and i think you could see there was moments where ben white uh, you've seen the photo i'm sure that he put on his instagram of him kind of dominating uh dominating Antonio but it's also a case of when he was dribbling Ben White knows how to deal with a dribbler he can he can see them down the line or he'll just wait for them to make that mistake and then clinically just take them off the ball didn't even get into that battle Ramsdale showed Antonio okay you're going to get close to me I'm going to give a bit back as well in a corner or with the tackle that we saw on him and he just we kind of managed to nullify him really well uh, I think the same goes for Jared Bowen. as a player that I really like mm -hmm. from his days in Me the championship. Too. I was worried about him as well. Yeah, he's got a cracking left foot, but again, completely nullified coming into Gabriel. Gabriel's like, I have this all day. Very happy with it. Uh, Tierney coming back, I thought was very good. And I think, you know, it's that main man, you know, the man that Super Kev told that he didn't want to be at the club anymore to his face in Granite Xhaka. And I would say... <laughs> 
he had a fantastic performance. Yeah, there's a mistake that I think everybody will talk about because he made one little mistake, but it meant absolute jot at the end of the day because us, the rest of the team helped him out and he got that. And he was the last man to leave the field as well last night saying thanks to everybody in the crowd. I think it's the... Um, I think Mikel's waiting for a run of results to go his way before the inevitable happens because there's going to be fallout when the right now the correct guy gets given the armband. But This, this is why I put that happen. picture up. I know it's uh, mm. Thomas Partey's old number and last season's kit, but look who's wearing the armband here. It yeah. does feel like it's coming, especially with Lacazette leaving. Um, but I wanted to get yeah. back to a play that you've seen play a lot. Um, following Brighton and living in that part of the world. Because Gabriel gets all the plaudits, but this guy, I feel, sometimes doesn't get um, the the credit he deserves. Do you, I felt one-on-one -on -one last night was one of his best mm. games, Josh. Oh. I, I don't know if I'm talking out of my butthole, but <laughs> I, I really... I really do feel like he doesn't get enough credit for that because everyone wants to talk about mm. how he's not good in the air or he's not good at this, mm. he's not good at that. But a partnership works because both players complement each yeah. other. Can you just tell me a little bit about Ben White? Yeah, I completely agree. We are generally a fan base that is the glass is half empty and full of piss. That's generally our uh, <laughs> mentality as a fan base. There's always there's got to be something wrong about the player. That's what I really liked about Tommy Arsu coming out this week. And when he was asked, why does oh Ben gosh. White not pass Tell everyone him? in case they yeah. missed it. Yeah. Tommy Arsu's asked, why does Ben White not pass to you at right back? And he says, he's because he's too good. If he passes to me, it means he's in trouble or he's going to put me under pressure because you never pay it to your fullback was basically what he was saying is the position he takes up. Tommy Arsu means Ben White should not be passing it to him because he's a good player. He's a great player. He's got that passing range that he doesn't need to kind of cop out and just slide a sideways pass. Um, it is amazing that as Arsenal fans who have bemoaned midfielders with sideways passes are demanding sideways passes from certain players. But yeah, <laughs> I just love that from Tommy Arsu, just coming out and just in a roundabout way saying, you know, using a negative as a positive and just saying, it's because he's so good, he doesn't pass to me. And... I think that's what we saw from Ben White is that general, that's what he can give us. We've seen it across a couple of weeks. He's also great on the front foot as well. We've seen him try things, get through that, carrying the ball. I think it's what we saw last night as well. You can see how high Xhaka and Partey were playing because they knew about the two guys behind. They don't need to go and collect the balls off that guy that they used to have to do. You know, if Holding or Chambers was there. They'd mm -hmm. need to drop back, pick the ball up from him. Uh, he's, Lacazette's dropping deep, but he's dropping deep for a reason. Not to pick the balls up from the centre-back. He's now just picking them up from the midfield. And everything's moved slightly higher up the pitch. And as you say, in terms of balance, you know, Pepe and Ramos, and we talk about the big lauded centre-backs in world football, you know, that kind of partnership is the one that I think is the one we can think of most recently. Mm -hmm. They were two very different players, but they matched each other perfectly. You know, they were both had a little bit of, uh, well, I say a little, uh, a big heap of kind of edge to them, but they were very different in their defensive styles. Uh, I could talk about Barcelona as well. Uh, PK and, well, Puyol. You go Puyol, or you can go PK and Mascherano. There's a, you're you know, going high, large, you're going high. <laughs> you're going, going high into there, but they're the easiest ones we can kind of think of, of a good mm -hmm. defensive partnership that's been together for a number of years. Vidic, it's, Ferdinand were great, Vidic, right? Ferdinand, yeah. Campbell and Torre. Uh, you you could even say in Leicester's season, Wes Morgan, mm. uh, you know, and I mean, I know I don't want to go Huth, too hot yeah. in Hooth. Yeah. yeah, right. They they yeah. they were decent together. Yeah, it's gone. it's all about it's all about building partnerships with centre backs. There's no it's very rare you get a great single centre back on there. You get like Van Dyke can come in and change things, but look how better Liverpool are when they found the partner for him. Exactly. Alex is a good overall centre back, but he doesn't command that entire defence himself. They're a team, and they're a unit. It's always spoken about, you know, with Kev's former uh, former colleagues, Lee Dixon's always talking about it. How they're a defensive unit, and that's the thing we can see that there's balance across that back line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Ben White isn't necessarily the number one player in the air for Arsenal in terms of defending. But Gabriel's the close. Tommy Arsu is next to him as well. Balance across that back. And if right. 
they've also got that intelligence as well. And I think there's been a couple of comments and that's the big thing. We are an intelligent group of football players. If Ben White's getting caught in the air, he's talking to Gabriel. Gabriel's, you know, they're handing the man over. Or if not, Tommy Asu, can you come in? Help me out. It's, Josh, what do you yeah. think? What do you say to this is what I hate about when we beat a team like West Ham who've been mm. lauded, but then when we beat them, it's like, oh, they had so many players out or they had defenders out. What what's your mm. answer to that, Josh? I mean, they've yeah, they've had a few players out. I know we're talking about their two centre backs. But that wasn't the you know, two centre backs wasn't the reason we beat them 2 0. Craig Dawson was probably their best player. When you One, look at it, the number of potentially man of the match, in, to be honest, absolutely. on a losing team. Yeah, if if it finished nil nil, he's getting the plaudits. He's getting man of the match. It's a completely different game. That regard, I thought he was absolutely superb. Apart from when he decided to clatter into half our players, but that was the big thing. For this West Ham team is still winning games. Uh, yeah, Antonio stopped scoring, and maybe that's why they're not converting a lot of their draws to wins. But they've still got good players in there. Still got good goal scorers. Mm -hmm. It's a bit like, oh, is James Ward Prowse now shit because uh, you know he lost to us and he got one free kick and he missed. I mean, he scored a free kick last night. Is he now their best player again? It's very fickle in that regard. Right. And, they still had Antonio. Yeah. They still had Rice. They still had <laughs> Suchek. They still had Masiaku. They still had Lanzini. They still yeah. had you know um, all of these players for now. So they still had these not too players. many change. Yeah, not too many changes from the team that beat Chelsea. And put it that way. Um, mm -hmm. and we're still lauding that Chelsea side as pretty decent. I know they've got injuries right now and a big COVID incident, but we'd still go into a game against Chelsea right now and think ourselves as a lesser team. So right. I think that's, yeah, West Ham, good team, a fixture we could easily have lost um, yep. on paper. A couple of weeks ago, people would have thought, yeah, West Ham, dangerous side. We've beaten them, and... Mm -hmm. We've just got to take the positives from it because I think there's so many positives from that game. Talking about it, Martinelli, superb performance again. Uh, Odegaard, superb. Lac uh, Saka, superb. Lacazette, superb. I think you can't really go through and fault any player yeah. from last night because we haven't seen consistency from them like that. Maybe over 80 minutes, we were dominant. Complete, completely agree. So let's get to uh, Kev's three questions. Um Leeds, they're not the team they were mm. last season. They've definitely had injuries. They've missed a lot of players. If we're talking mm. about a team that has <laughs> really missed players, Leeds yeah. United are definitely one of those. Uh, it seems like for a lot of Leeds fans, the Marcello Bielsa love story is coming to um, a little bit of a finality. Results mm. are everything, Josh. Uh, you know, uh, I don't think we've lost to Leeds since 2003. I might be I will double check that. Mm -hmm. It's um, It's been a long time since we've lost to them in the league. Of course, they were out of the Premier League for many, many years, which has probably helped our stats <laughs> on, on that one. Uh, ben White knows Leeds very well, knows mm -hmm. Ellen Road very well, knows Marcello Bielsa very well. They did get slapped by City 7-0, but they're also the type of team that can turn it on at any time. Mm. And I think if this was two seasons ago, I would say I feel very vulnerable to their their, their counter-attacking. But this leads this season. How terrible would it be if we have such a phenomenal result um, that we did against West Ham? Mm -hmm. Our away form is poor. We are second best at home uh, in the league mm -hmm. this season. We've got to match that with our away form in order for us to finish in that top four. What's your take? on Kev's question about Leeds and maybe some people perceiving this as too much of an easy game. Oh, well, I'm I'm not saying it's a completely easy game, but you mm -hmm. know after a 7-0, they're going to try and tighten up at least uh, in that regard, be a bit more defensive. Even if it's a Bielsa side, they're, they're going to try and do a bit of damage limitation against us. For me, it's a game where if we keep our heads, we're cool, look calm and collected about it, this should turn into what would be dubbed a uh, you know, a routine victory. Uh, I think that's. I'm not expecting a similar scoreline to City, by. Uh, but I don't think they are certainly, as you say, the team that we should be worried about from the team that came up, or even a team from last season with everybody fit and available. Completely different game for us, but I think we're coming in at the right time 
to be playing Leeds. And I think there's definitely an option for us there to be getting a good, maybe statement win, certainly improve our goal difference, we'll put it that way. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm certain that we would take many Leeds players in the Arsenal squad. But mm -hmm. right now, as a Leeds team generally, we're the better team on paper. As you say, Ben White knows uh, Ellen Road very well. So I'm sure he's giving them some of the secrets of how to deal with uh, a hostile evening Yorkshire crowd. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, they, yeah. They, 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 uh, they're they they not known to be super friendly. Um, no. no. I, last time I was at Ellen Road was, um, gosh, was it 99? Do you remember mm. when we were looking to win the title and they beat us 1-0? Mm. That yeah. was the worst night ever. Uh, it was awful. Uh, but anyway, I digress Hi. there. Um, so, Let's get to Kev's seven, second question because we're going to move back to Leeds with your mm. with your tactical um, uh, analysis, Josh. Thoughts on Arteta was uh, um, Kev's second question. Polarizing, if ever mm. there was an Arsenal manager <laughs> who was a polarizing figure. <laughs> I thought I've been very critical of him, mm. but I'm not the I'm not of the brigade that is going to talk smack about him just because I give him credit mm. when it's due and I criticize him when it's due. And last night he got a nine for me. I thought he managed that mm. game brilliantly. And at one point I, I text Kev and I said, why is he subbing Udegaard? Why <laughs> is he doing that? Oh, the Mill Smith Rowe scored. Okay. <laughs> uh, another uh, spoonful of humble pie from the fridge. Uh, that one. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, I was the same part of, uh, I was looking at it from a fancy, a fancy football point of view. I was looking at um, the Southampton striker, Broja, and my uh, mm -hmm. thing saying, don't bring Smith-Rowe on, don't bring Smith-Rowe on. I can get 12 points off my bench if uh, <laughs> Broja comes on. And then, yeah, Smith-Rowe comes in, gets that goal, and I'm going, oh, I feel a bit better now about the whole situation. But, yeah, with Mikel... I say he's very similar to kind of Martinelli in terms of he's a raw manager. Just like I say, he's a raw young player. He's going to have peaks and troughs in the decisions he makes. And I think right now he knows he has made a big kind of statement in his managerial career, stripping arguably a talismanic player of the captaincy, completely bumming him out. And you've got to win games when you do something as big as that, irrespective of the fact that we, as a majority of the fan base, well, a group of the fan base would say we'd be better out, better off without Aubameyang in the starting eleven anyway, irrespective of circumstance. But mm -hmm. because he's taken him out of there in such a public way mm -hmm. and be called him up on his bullshit, I think that's the big yeah. thing. Called him up on it. That's it. You're out. You've got to then put in these statement performances. Uh, and we've seen it. We saw it against Spurs. You know, mm -hmm. we, we dropped a Bamiyan for being late. He, we had to win that game and we did. Yeah. And it's the same yep. here. Yeah. And, and, you know, one of the things I said on the show last night, Josh, is to do that, to bench your captain and to take the armband off him. And then you galvanize your team to go out and play the way they did. And Kev always says it's the players, it's the players who cross the white lines. But I do think that these last few days required a bit of man management. Mm. If you're going to do that and you're going to make that decision, you have to convince a group of men um, to follow you and believe mm. in your ideas and the decision that you've made. And I think for the first time, I saw a level of maturity from the manager that I hadn't seen before. And whether you're in or out on him, I think what he's done in the last three days, you have to give him a little bit of a round of applause because he made a massive call and he backed it up because that team, and we've seen Arsenal players fold like cheap lawn chairs on Brighton Pier, <laughs> Mr. Josh, in the past. Mm. He had them behind him. And he had that team listening and they played for not only the badge themselves and for him against West Ham last night. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the other thing that we've also got to lord him and Edu for is we're talking about 
uh, you know, who should be the next captain. Mm -hmm. And there's no, for me, there's no outstanding candidate. But that's not because we're talking about best of a bad bunch. That's because we've got a group of players now who have been brought in, uh, you know, under Edu and Arteta's stewardship, where we can go, he should be captain or he should be captain. And we've got a good discussion on why certain players should be captain. You know, Granite mm -hmm. Xhaka, he's in there. I know he was the captain before. And obviously, there's a lot you can see from him. We're talking about Kieran Tierney as being an option. I think Martin Odegaard, he's one of one that I'd throw into the ring as captain of Norway already. And if you've seen what the Norwegian national team stands for, there's a lot of cross values to what the Arsenal mm -hmm. as a kind of club that is bigger than a football entity, how they feel about uh, progressive movements. I think that's something to look at as well. There's a lot of players that have come in that we could all see, yeah, they could be captain. And I think they're all positive reasons for why they should be captain. It's not like we're looking at a team full of Galasses and uh, you know, end of line Henri Fabregas's and uh, whoever else uh, went on strike to get themselves out of the club. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, I, I know a lot of people are saying bringing on Eddie to spite Pepe. Pepe's had a lot of opportunities at this club, you guys. And he did bring him on uh, two games ago. So I'm sure people weren't moaning about that when he did bring yeah. Pepe on. But when he's making these kinds of decisions and he's trying to build a new DNA and culture, and clearly I think you're seeing the turn of the end of the Wenger era and the end of the yeah. Emery era. And you have to say to yourself, for him, is that level of maturity? Why are Nenny still there? Why is Xhaka yeah. still there, Josh? And the fact that maybe they do have behind closed doors, no matter what we think or the mistakes they make, they have a different type of attitude compared mm. to some of the other players who are throwing their toys out of the pram. Yeah, it's that kind of players with weak mentalities have left. It's Mustafi's gone, Ozil's gone, uh, Socrates, sorry, so. Uh, Socrates, he left, he, he left and uh, yeah, I think there's... You can kind of see it with Pepe, the man we're talking at the moment. Just mm -hmm. Wenger would have loved him. Yeah, a mercurial winger who blows hot and cold. Wenger <laughs> yeah. all over. Gets picked the, every week. <laughs> exactly. This is the man that played Alex Awobi for 38 games in the season. <laughs> uh, of course, he would have loved Pepe. I think that's the big thing is there's a lot of mentality. See, even... Uh, Vinny Vinny's, agrees with Vinny's you. Yeah, with totally. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. It's yeah. all about having that mentality. And we're getting players into the club who've got the right mentality while shifting out those who don't. Totally. All right, let's get to his last question. And that was, mm. has anybody <laughs> seen Oba's commitment? <laughs> I thought that was very well, interestingly worded <laughs> from Supercare, by the way. I actually said on the show, when his brother came out and made a statement, all they did was complain about how publicly <laughs> it was handled. But have you seen an apology or... Obama Yang saying, I'm sorry, I want to play for this club. I love this club. I'm going to earn my spot back and I'm going to prove to my teammates and the manager that I'm I'm the dude. Yeah, I mean, it depends on what he was getting tattooed on his arm, right? It could have been <laughs> up tattoo forever. Who knows? <laughs> but I doubt it was, yeah. Uh, moaning about the fact that you've been publicly called out for the third time. This isn't a one-off incident. He has been... <sighs> Well, he was called out with the Spurs incident. That's the main one we've heard come to light. There's been other ones as well for indiscipline, ill discipline mm -hmm. as well, uh, especially when we've got a player like Maitland Niles, who's also been, has got a track record of not necessarily being the most punctual uh, to training. And mm -hmm. he's not been in the team recently. Now, he has not necessarily been public with him, but he's got to make an example of a player, and especially if it's your captain. Because, hey, if I was Maitland Nars and I was turning up 10 minutes late, but my captain was bowling in 15 minutes late and the boss is having a go at me, well, you know the first thing that I'm doing, defending myself, saying, well, he turned up five minutes after me. Why am I getting the bollock in? Why have I been dropped off of good performances? So it's all about making that statement. And mm -hmm. yeah, I've not seen anything from Aubameyang. Um, because, you know, when Aubameyang's on the back foot, like when we lose games, where was he after that in post-match 
interviews. Only when he the... only when he scored and only when he got a yep. hat trick was he in front of the cameras as Arsenal captain. And no. let's be honest, you know, had we lost that game last night, could you imagine mm. the vitriol that would have come at Arteta and the squad, Josh? Mm. I'm so happy. Mm for him and for the team that they did win that game last night and they didn't have to deal with the um you know the the fallout of that which is mm. why winning a home, winning away to Leeds we've got to back that up mm. and I want to switch gears and start getting your take yeah. on the team and you know what we could face with all of their injuries as well you've stuck with the same team I believe mm. here, I have that is the same lineup as we've seen uh, yeah, so the last two games now. And I think much like uh, yeah, David Moyes, a former um, manager of Arteta, likes to stick with the winning side. We've seen it with Arteta as well, likes to stick with the winning side. I wouldn't want to chop, chop and change too much. I mm -hmm. think Odegaard didn't do enough to get dropped. Smith Rowe has done excellently, but from the start of the game... I'm going to keep it the same way and continue to mix them up. We know that we've got, we're playing a team that, as you say, has been absolutely devastated by injuries. As reports, they've only got 11 players, first team players fit, and that's including two goalkeepers. Mm -hmm. So that's obviously an opportunity for us that towards the end of the game, just like we saw with Smith Rowe's goal, bring him in late give him that chance. He'll probably pick up a brace. If you bring him in, give him half an hour with some tired legs, because we know Leeds aren't going to rotate too much. One, because they can't. And secondly, do you want to be putting in young kids against a team that's on fire? You mm -hmm. probably don't. You'd rather keep your, your experienced players out there and save those players a little bit. But also to say what Kevin's saying, don't want to be complacent either. I don't want to necessarily be chopping and changing too much. If I was going to make a change, it would be maybe one player in. What? what, that's it. what are you worried about Martinelli's? Uh, you know, he cramped a little. Would you, <laughs> Lone Star? <laughs> that's funny. Um, <laughs> would, would you? Would you rest Martinelli in this one and maybe put him on the bench and bring ESR in on the left or? I mean, I know I see your yeah. team, but I'm asking you the question. Just, yeah. is this I, the game? If you were going to rest him, would it be this game? Would it be Norwich? Like, what What? What do you I think, think? I think we're okay in terms of resting. I don't think we need to rest Martinelli right now. Mm -hmm. It might be one that towards the end of the game, we bring him off a little bit earlier, try and get the game won early. I think you know, if we're two, we finish our chances basically against West Ham. We've probably got that game sewn up in the before Martinelli even goes down the cramp, mm -hmm. ideally. And I think that's the opportunity we've got to go with. As, as Terence has said, you've got to stick with the same formula for me anyway, but try and get that result over the line quicker because we didn't really think feel fully comfortable. At least, you know, the players look comfortable on the pitch, but I think as fans, we didn't necessarily feel comfortable until we got that second goal. And I think that's that's the I thing that I'd love to see. Yeah, I, I, I almost cried when when Laka missed the penalty. I was like, oh mm. gosh, it's going to be the ten man syndrome. Yeah. Somehow they find a way, and we just get a point from this game, and it's going to be a nightmare. But as wow. soon as we got the second, you, I think you could feel everybody just go, cool, <sighs> you, sigh you of relief, stick yeah. a pin in me, and yeah that was it that was exactly <laughs> what we need and i don't want that moment again and we've got you know hit leads hard get it done early uh it's a bit like we kind of seen with we've seen sides do it to us like liverpool beat us in 25 minutes it score four goals and they're like great now just rotate the players off that we need to save and everybody right. who thinks pepe is a good player well pepe might get some time um to show but that also, also josh we beat tottenham in 35 minutes we did the same yeah. thing to leicester away from home but i think i would love to see an away is it possible can you talk me through it a little bit the way we performed away mm. to leicester in the first half is that something mm. you'd like to see against leeds or are they too dangerous on the counter despite the fact that they've got these injuries uh, I don't think they're more dangerous than Leicester. We'll put it that mm -hmm. way. Uh, I think the Leicester side that we came up against was very dangerous. Uh, I'm thinking someone like Lookman was a, on, the, on the counter. He was a player that was very dangerous against us. 
I think with what Leeds have got left, they've obviously still got their danger man in Rafinha. He's a player to keep an eye on. But you know what? Where he's tended to play, it's up against Kieran Tierney. And we've got to back our man to be pushing him back. Because with uh, yeah, him bombing on forward, we know Leeds are going to be playing an interesting formation. It might be Bielsa's kind of, uh, I've got to get my numbers right now, 3-3-1-3. Three, three, three. <laughs> or it could be something completely different. Uh, but yeah, I'd like to see like a big old smash and grab. Get it in early, get it done. Uh, mm -hmm. Couple of goals up and then bring in these players. And I'd rather we rest players after we've got the kind, you know, we've used them to what we need them to do right. and then bring in these other players because we've still got squad players that, you know, Sambi. I'd love Sambi to start this game, but I don't think it's necessarily right at this moment. We saw Xhaka play tremendously well. We saw Thomas Partey play well. I'd like at some point, get the game sorted, bring Partey off, bring Sambi on, because we know in January, when Partey's gone off to the African Cup of Nations with Ghana, that Sambi and Xhaka is going to be our central midfield. There's no yeah. two bones about it. They're the only two that will be left and available at that moment in time. Um, yeah. Unless, of course, we do something with Jack Wilshire, but I'll whisper that one quietly. <laughs> you better whisper that like really, really. In fact, put yourself on mute. <laughs> I would say we should say friend of the podcast, though, right? He friend is a friend of the, of podcast. the podcast. We do love Super Jack, and he'll be back later on this season for sure. Uh, I wanted to lob this out to you because I was going to ask you this, and Ryan took the words out of my mouth. Mm. They do love to man mark. Mm. Is this something that worries you, Josh, or? Would not, it have worried you with maybe not so much with this particular Arsenal mm, team? No, it doesn't worry me with this particular team because we've got players that know how to beat a man as well. Because, yeah, I know what Ryan's saying in terms of Leeds love to man mark whilst on the pitch. It's not just a set play thing they do. They will individually, each man has got their man and they'll kind of flex with everybody else's formation. If we get our quick passing sorted, you could see what, City did to them. Get your quick passing sorted. Br drag all those players out because they're naturally going to follow their man and that will create the space for us. You could see Martinelli took two or three players with him for his goal just because mm -hmm. of the speed of the movement and you've got to have the good pass. So I think that's the kind of thing that we'll see from them. And yeah, it is a worry, but I'd, I'd say it is more of just, it's a potential banana skin there because you know it's, like we were saying, we've got that kind of pessimism <laughs> down to 10 men. Oh, yeah, this means so we're going to lose because, yeah, so Arsenal. And that's the other thing with Leeds. You know, they've got half their team out injured and, you know, Bielsa's can't even find a bucket to sit on. It's that kind of dire straits <laughs> for them right <laughs> How now. How does he do it? For his age, too. I'm like, if I do that for five minutes and I feel like my knees are going to crack. I mean, I'm, yeah. you know. <laughs> He's mastered that brilliantly, hasn't he? Uh, I, <laughs> bless someone, his soul. Yeah, there must be a masseuse that's just <laughs> hired just purely to work on his legs after the game. Also, I wanted to put this up from Lone Star. Um, mm. Leeds are not poor. I would. Uh, <laughs> I think they've been poor this season, Lone Star, but they just lost 3-2 to Chelsea and then 7-0 to City. We lost 5-0 to City and 2-0 to Chelsea. What do you think of when we look at results and we compare them like that? West Ham beat City, they beat mm. Chelsea. We beat West Ham. It's a What's very take, different Josh? it's a very different lineup to the uh you know the the teams that we had for City and Chelsea. Uh, certainly the City game anyway. Um yeah, and Chelsea because the first two games of the season, weren't they? Or was it Liverpool? Uh, that's where I'm getting confused. The first batch of three that we lost. Yes. City was in there, definitely. And that was a completely different team. I think it's one of those, when you look back at that starting 11, you go, they started. And they started? What? We hadn't seen Ramsdale start yet for us at that point. Ben White was out with COVID. Uh, Tommy Asu hadn't come in because we were still in a transfer window. We hadn't bought him. Completely different side at this point. And that's the thing that you can't necessarily take that result with much uh, much pinch of uh, that okay. much salt. It was a bit tongue-in-cheek, I think, with that one. To say, yeah, uh, no. Yeah. I mean, look, our away form is woeful. Mm. It's so weird, isn't it? Towards the end of Wenger's tenure, the away form mm. was poor. Under Emery... He reversed it a little bit, but mm. again, our away form, not so great. Under Arteta, 
when he first started, our away form mm. was really good and our home form was poor. And now we've started to build, I say this loosely, Josh, a mini fortress mm. at the Emirates where we're, we're telling teams it's not going to be easy for you to beat us at home. But yeah. what's happening away from home? Talk to me about that a little bit. It is, it is very weird about what's happening there. I don't know if there's still the case of crowds making a difference mm -hmm. obviously making a difference for us at home because as you say it completely turned on its head post covid that our form has completely changed there so that's a big one there i can be slightly concerned for our away form but there's the only way is up we just got to win away games it's the only way we're going to correct it and this is a perfect opportunity for us to do it and we are building on clean sheets as well that's a great start if we're not conceding we're not going to lose uh, it sounds like a Michael Owen line, that one, but uh, it, is, <laughs> it is true. Uh, as you say, eight clean sheets for Aaron Ramsdale. It's uh, just below uh, Allison and uh, mm -hmm. Edison. Edison but I'd, also, yeah. I'd also say that those two players have had the benefit of playing Arsenal. Uh, Ramsdale won't get that opportunity uh, right. to get his clean sheets. And look sheets. at the players they have in front of them exactly. as well. Exactly. Uh, we're getting to that point as well. I think mm -hmm. uh, we will see... And I remember Chesney winning a Golden Glove whilst he was at uh, Bless his soul. Arsenal. I know, right? Oh, whatever that boy would have done if he didn't decide to go for a cigarette in the shower. But I mean, but still, what a moment. Right. What a man. <laughs> what a man. <laughs> what a man. Right. Yeah. I'm going to, before I get your prediction, mm. um, we're going to close out with uh, Kev's other question for you mm. and for the squaddies. By the way, this is Kev at the game last night. And that's Xhaka behind him. And this is him working tonight uh, on, I think it's the Liverpool game. Not quite sure, but he's looking dapper there, isn't he, Josh? If only we all had Super Kev style, smashing oh, it right there. Absolutely. I couldn't <laughs> a pull off a dicky bow Thursday. On a dicky bow Thursday. Um, and seeing as we're showing pictures, this was Vinny and Vespa lining up for breakfast this morning <laughs> after the big win last night, uh, wanting to celebrate with some extra kibbles, uh, you know, channeling their inner Xhaka, <laughs> trying to get in trouble. <laughs> okay, here's the uh, here's the question for you guys from Super Kev looking dapper this dicky bow Thursday. Here we go. Hi, Sophie. Hi, squaddies. This is a question for you all. What positions are priority for us now? One, two and three positions. What are they pr the priority for us? Interesting to hear your, your thoughts. Take care, squaddies. I'm out. <laughs> so this was inspired by a conversation we were having yesterday when Kev was leaving the game. We were having a bit of a chat because Kev mm. was like, so if, you know, it's interesting because if you look at the squad, if the evolution of it, are we like three or four players away from really, you know, trying to be competitive in the Premier League again and mm. maybe nailing a, a top four spot? Josh, what's your take on the three? Oh, well, I'm going to say two are the same position because I think it's depth required and that striker. And I think it's obvious. We can see it now that uh, Lacazette, I, I don't know how I'd like to try and find a replacement for Lacazette rather than offer him a, because the guy wants a contract that's going to be secure for him. So he's going to be asking three years. This mm -hmm. is what he's going to be asking realistically. And a lot Maybe of money, right, get, Josh? Yeah, he'll want a raise, certainly. Uh, but we've seen that, you know what, he could, he's one of those players that could perform better into his 30s compared to other players that we could have. So wouldn't necessarily have a problem with that. But yeah, striker is uh, the big one for me. The second one is a backup striker because I think we need that marquee signing and there's plenty of names out there. Uh, there's a chance we could go big on uh, another Norwegian in the side I wonder if that's a possibility <laughs> go big on that one you naughty naughty boy oh, going yeah. there <laughs> yeah I mean if you just got to get Odegaard to do something for us and if that's just whisper in his ear yeah we've got to get somebody in and then another another one in behind as well uh, and then the other player position I think we need to bring in 
is mid central midfield. We started bringing in more central midfielders, but I think it's going to be the thing like Alneni moving out. Um, the same with, I know it, it's still that Amanar and Granit Xhaka. I mean, if Kev was here, he'd be telling me I'd be selling Thomas Partey as well. And the jury, I think, might still be out on that one. <laughs> But central midfield is definitely an area we need to look at. In terms of the defence and the back four, I don't think we need to make any changes there at all. In terms of a backup right back, we've got Callum Chambers. Callum Chambers is, for me, he fits that same model as Tommy Arsu. Oh, he doesn't. And Josh. He does. N- Callum no. Chambers, that kind of He's right n- back position. He couldn't lace Tommy Arsu's left boot. I mean, I, I'm sorry. Don't. If we're moving on as a squad and mm. we're moving on as a team, I said to Kev last night, I said, God forbid anything happens to Tommy Yasu. He's so durable. He's so reliable. He's been so consistent. I'm beyond impressed with him. Mm. He just does his job, but he also does a little extra that goes completely yeah. unnoticed unless you're an Arsenal supporter. <laughs> I would love it if we had the same situation at right back as we did at, at left back. Mm. I mean, don't you think it's time to like upgrade the Callum Chambers of the world and just completely move away from that? I think what I'd like to see maybe then is just seeing the groundwork of how durable Tommy Arso is. If he can get through a season, then I've got no problem with Callum Chambers. There. We've got to talk about our homegrown quota as well. We are very good at chopping out quite a few players that qualify as it. I'm sure we want mm-hmm. Eddie Nketiah there uh, going. And as I say, Chambers, people are saying he's not necessarily a Premier League player. We're not saying playing him in the Premier League. There's other competitions, especially if we get into Europe, that he's got an opportunity to play in. Uh, so things like what we're going to do with Rob Holding, it's another one. Uh, and Cedric, is Cedric going to be an option for us. Well, he's on the bench. Someone just said Cedric yeah. is on the bench more than Chambers. You had everybody at hello mm. and I then know. you lost a few people with the Chambers. Do you want to make it up to them or are you going to stick or twist? Oh, and they're like the people that were giving me hate when I said that we'd win 3-0 against Southampton. They can uh, swivel <laughs> on it. I was wondering <laughs> when you'd bring that up. <laughs> oh, it was in my back pocket. That was in my chamber. That was loaded. <laughs> It's just you didn't see where it was coming from. But yeah. Oh, uh, my goodness. I would, a... I would just, for me, Chambers is a player that I would happily keep in and around the squad. And yeah, I'm not going to backtrack on it either. I'm just going to sit in it. I'm happy with Chambers there. But it, for me, he is the, uh, the, he fits the profile of what we want from a right back. Well, so he we, does. He's one of those guys mm. that's reliable, right? Mm. He's but I just feel that this team's moved on from that now. So I would love for us to go in mm. and, you know, look at maybe and, and look at maybe British talent um, for mm. on the right back side of things. What What's your take on Trippier? Are, are you a, a, a oops, did I, I just, did I just I, make your head explode? <laughs> I know I can't, I'd like Trippier. He's got a bit, he's tainted, isn't he? He's got well, a bit of spurs yeah. on him. We'd need to disinfect pop him in a uh, But I think after the Atletico era, has he yeah. washed that away now? Has he cleansed? Well, saying about our last players we've got from Atleti, I don't necessarily know that's a good thing. Either. <laughs> <laughs> they come from there. Uh, uh, it's not necessarily the moniker it used to be. Of, oh, we got a player from Atletico Madrid. Excellent. Uh, I no, think I just seriously. lost everybody, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But no, oh, I do like goodness. I do like Kieran Trippier, but I think it's it, there was definitely an option. I think last summer that we could have gone for that, but we're looking at a different style of right back. It's the same as people saying, "Oh, we should take say, Cedric at right back." Mm-hmm. It's completely different to what Tommy Yasu asks and does for us. It's like ripping it up, ripping up the the playbook that we've got and going. One player's out, we've got to completely change how our entire defensive unit works if Cedric comes in. What's your take on? Um, I'm having a brain fart. Norwich, like uh, Norwich is right back. Ah, um, uh, uh, Max Aaron's. Yes. Yeah. Is he? Do you think he's good enough? I've never he's... been super sold or impressed, but maybe that's because, unfortunately for him, he's a good mm. player in a poor team. Sometimes, really good players shine mm. in a poor team, like Grealish did early on mm. with Villa. Is is he someone that we should be looking at? 
I think certainly from like a a quota of English players, he's one to have a look at for right back. Mm -hmm. But again, I'd say the other thing is it doesn't fit the profile of Tommy Asu. They're completely different right backs. They it, are. You can see there's a there's at least a similarity in what Tavares and Tierney are for left backs. Mm -hmm. They've got a similarity to them. I think we need that similar balance at right back as well. Because if we do get uh, you know, a, a right back that well, if Tommy Asu gets injured, what is the opportunity there uh, to bring in somebody who again is good in the air? And there's not many right backs that are good in the mm -hmm. air. And yeah, that's the kind of thing that I think we need to have a look at. And so I'd say this exactly the same. If anyone's going to say, I think I saw a comment on it, Tarek Lamptey. Yeah, like he came up he's a, a couple of he's, times. He's a right wing back. He's not a right back by any right. stretch of the imagination. Um, yeah, he's not going to be playing in the back four. Um, I think the only way he's defending a corner is if we get Per Mersesaka and he stands on the shoulders. <laughs> Josh, I think we're an injury away from mm. having a bit of a, you know, a pickle in defence. You don't, it you don't, when be. you, yeah. right? It's close. I think that's the benefit of us only really playing one game a week. We don't have to rotate across for Europe. If Rob Holding had to come back into this defence as a as an option, obviously he's got a great new hairline. Um, I'm sure that will get him through a couple of the, you know the first ten minutes <laughs> of the game. But there's yeah, they are very different to it, and I think there's a there's definitely some work to be done with players coming through. We've got a lot of good youth players that are out and about in the championship and mm -hmm. lower down in the leagues who can come through and supplement them. I'm thinking uh, Dan Ballard is at. Uh, Millwall, mm -hmm. top of my head, he's a player that can come in and be an option at centre back, maybe. And that's where we'll start bringing them in, bringing these youth players through. What I can see the job that Per and uh, Edu are doing is just moving players through, giving them the experience. I mean, we've also missed the, uh, I forgot the French elephant not in the room. Yes. Over in indeed. Marseille. Yes, he's going to come. We'll back have the pirate point. on in a couple of weeks to give oh. us the old, uh, <laughs> the old elephant uh, yeah. in the room update. <laughs> give him the update on him. Um, I'm yes. sure it'll be very um, biased, should we say, between yeah. there. But it depends if Marseille have been able to finish any games without their crowd trouble. Um, we'll see. But also, I mean, I wouldn't be adverse to God forbid Tommy Yasu mm. gets injured. And look, guys, it's not we're we're trying to, you know, football is weird and weird things happen sometimes, but. I am happy that Maitland Niles is still there mm. because we've seen him do well at right back. We we've seen him kind of be that hybrid satellite dish, a mm. little bit like Phil Neville at Manchester United can play various positions and can, you know, he's a square peg in a round hole that works. Mm. Um, so I, I feel good about that. Right. I'm going to yeah. get you out on this, Josh. <laughs> uh, Taib, you have been such a moaner tonight. Take a night off, sweetheart. Do you want a yellow card? Do you want me to just brandish it just because? I mean, can you give the team and the manager a little credit? As you know, I am not a lover of Mikel Arteta or I have not been. But can we just be happy about what happened last night? The fact that we beat a West Ham team that everyone was having a little over, if we're going to be honest, <laughs> okay? Can you just take a night off, you and Newman, go get a cup of coffee together, have a biscotti? have a little dunk, you know, just chill out a little bit and just relax, as Aaron Rodgers would say. Um, Josh, what's your prediction for Leeds? Uh, I'm going to go with a 3-0 win again. Uh, it wasn't, I wasn't going to say with Southampton. It's just, yeah, I think 3-0 is probably where we're at right now. It's going to be, they're going to be slightly tighter than City and I don't think we're as good going forward as City. I could be absolutely shocked and surprised if we hit a similar kind of tennis score that City did. But I think it's 3-0 for, for us. I think it becomes a routine win uh, overall for us. And yeah, I feel very positive coming into the game as well. Oh. Um, yeah, I can't see Leeds scoring against us with the quality of the back five that we've seen. At the moment, even Jack are messing up in front of them or Partey starting <laughs> West Ham counter-attacks can't stop them uh, from keeping that clean sheet. 
Yeah. Um, I yeah. I'll I'll give the prediction. I fancy a win. I'll give my score prediction tomorrow when Super Kev returns for Kevin says live. And I tell you, Newman and Ty, you better be better behaved tomorrow night. You know because Kev won't have it. We'll be handing cards left, right, and center. That's for sure. Can't wait for the game. Let's hope it goes forward, Josh. A little bit of a concern right now with all these matches being postponed. I'm a firm believer that somehow, some way. If it's fair to all teams, we've got to figure out how to keep the season going. There's so many ramifications for communities, mm. businesses around grounds, um, people that work for the club, of course. We just – safety first always. Mm. Um, but at the same time, we have to, as much as possible, keep things going if everyone's mm. safe. Is that your take? Yeah, if we stay safe and stay smart as well then I don't see a reason that we necessarily need to be putting off games. Um, say I've, I've been to the Amex most games of the season. I wasn't there last night because I chose the Arsenal over Brighton. <laughs> to tell what my real allegiances are. Uh, I chose the win over the loss because I'm a glory hunter. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In terms of what's been going there, you know, you've got to show things like um, passes and things like that. If you're feeling a little bit, you know, a little bit under the weather, Get yourself don't checked. Go and get don't yourself go. checked. Don't go. Most of the games are on TV now, especially if you're looking at the Arsenal. Um, you know, we don't play Saturday 3 p.m. that often anymore. So, yeah, just stay safe. Um, and worst case scenario, you've just got to watch it on the telly and have to deal with Steve McManaman. Um, if you're really lucky, oh, gosh. you're listening. You're listening overseas, and you will see Super. We've got Kev. Lee Dixon. Lee and Dixon, Kev. And yes. Super Kev. You'll see Super Kev on your stream. Um, we're unfortunate we don't always get him. Um, yeah. Over here. Well, we're lucky enough to get Super Kev and Lee Dixon, that's for sure. And look, Josh, superb tactical squad with you this Thank evening. You. Thanks so much for your insights. Love your take on things. And, um, you know, let's hope that football does continue and. In, in, the, in the light of safety and good health, that is the most important thing for everybody. And look, guys, stay safe out there. It's a crazy world we're living in right now. But if we all do the right thing, then hopefully our football will continue as well. Right, Josh, let everyone know where they can find you and your you brilliance. Can, oh, you can find me on Twitter at Josh the Human 23 or maybe sometimes I now moonlight <laughs> on a Burkamp Wonderland. Um, Danny, Danny went into a bit of a, a tirade <laughs> and kicked us all out and then kicked us back in. Um, so, yeah. Was that recent again? I mean, that's happened a few times. Uh, it, was about, it was about two weeks ago. He just, okay. just threw his toys out of the pram and um, then tried to claim them all back. So, yeah, we're, we're getting there. We're getting there back. But you will see me. I think I was on there last week. So I'm sure I'll that's be there brilliant. again. That's brilliant. Find Josh walking around Brighton Zoo. That, oh. You'll never live that one down. You'll never hey, live that one down. I have a good time. Deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, Newman is now giving you the score tonight is so to Josh for. And I think that's because <laughs> I called him and Taib out. But it would have been that anyway because you're brilliant. Right. Uh, the Highbury squad returns tomorrow night with Super Kev. Super Kevin Campbell's live fan Q&A. Uh, get ready, be prepared, come armed, as you know, Super Kev will. Josh, thanks a lot, mate. You take care, you stay safe, and we'll see you in a week or so. Yeah. And in the meantime, squaddies, uh, love you, take care. And as Super Kev would say, at ease. <laughs> Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad.